Hi, today you join me again at my favourite fishery, uh, back on Pool 9 at the Glebe. Today I'm going to demonstrate a different approach to hard pellet fishing on the pole. Um, it's summertime, we're in August now and the fish are feeding freely, uh, but the, the usual approach I'd take is to ping pellets at a long pole, but I'm not going to do that today. I'm just going to change things slightly and feed more accurately with a, a cad pot on the end of my pole, just like you would once it cools down. Um, just to keep the bait really tight around my hook bait. Um, I'm fishing two, two lines today. I'm going to fish at 13 metres up the bank. I've, I've decided to sit on 129 on pool 9, which isn't the best peg, but I wanted to fish alongside an end bank so I can get into fairly shallow water to demonstrate my long pole fishing. And my second line, will be like what I call a chucking line, which is normally around about five metres at the bottom of the slope. This lake, the lads who have fished this will know what I'm talking about. The margins slope really steeply down to a level base. So on both lines, that's what I've plumbed to. I'm not going to try and fish on the slope, get all sorts of problems with your bait rolling down. You know, like I said, I'm going to try and fish really accurately over my hook bait. So for that reason, I need to find a flat bottom and I'll be shipping out and placing a small pot full of hard six mil pellets, um, tipping them on my float once my float's settled and waiting for a bite like that. I expect loads of liners because as I say, we're in June now, the water's nice and warm and there'll be a lot of fish up, up in the water. So just by feeding meagre amounts of six mil thin perfect pellets. I'm just going to be tipping them down the same column all day, hopefully to land on, on my float, plumb down onto my hook bait and wade through the liners if you like and now and again I'll catch a fish. So to start off I'm going to bring my pole back and, and put about a dozen pellets. I'm going to start off by putting about a dozen six mil pellets in my uni pot and I don't want to do any more than that. I've got the large size uh, cad pot on there. That's for if, uh, while I'm fishing, if I need to increase the feed. Um, it doesn't matter about, you know, going down. The, there's two sizes below that, but I'm going to stay with the big pot for today so that way I can increase the feed. And what I've already got is a banded six mil on the hook. I've actually hooked the band um, rather than have it on a hair rig. So I'll show you how to tie that later. Uh, so right, I'm going to go out at 13 metres up the margin and see if I can catch a fish first cast. You'll see once I get out there, it's ideal really. I've got a, a small bramble branch just coming into the water and they've plumbed around that and they've found the start of the flat bottom at the bottom of the slope which I aim to fish at. So every time I go in, I drop my rig in, plumb down with that branch that's in the water and once my float's settled, I'm just gonna spin my pole around and drop them dozen pellets on top of my float. And then I'm just going to wait for a bite. I expect to catch fairly early. Uh, there'll be, there's a fish on top there now. But I'm going to get lots of liners fishing like this. I know I will. But I'm, I'm only going to lift, 
I'm only going to lift into things that look like bites. Indications that look like bites. A quick stab under with a float ideally, rather than a slow movement that takes a, the float under. You can see they've got fish first chuck. Nice, nice quick bite. And uh, hopefully that'll be the, the way things work out for me today. The elastic is a 15 Jura slip. That balances out nicely to the GPM size 18 hook I've got, which I've put the band on with a six mil hard pellet. It's about three, three pound, this fish. Not a big fish, but there's a lot of big fish in here. Um, just take what, what comes really. Pulled most of the elastic out, it's under control within netting range. It's just then I'm going to raise my pole to get the fish near the top, ready to net it. This is when the fight, this normally come in quite easily, it's just they see the net, they see the angler above them, the, the, the lake is fairly low. Um, so what doesn't help is I'm a fair way off the water's surface and for that reason the fish seem to fight harder. They've got a, a line of vision that they can see high, high up rather than you know if you were lower to the water but there's not a lot I can do about that. My box legs are right down onto the platform I'm sitting on so I can't get any lower but I'll manage fine. This is a miracle. Nice fish for Seems I was, wasn't in more than two or three minutes. Fully scaled mirror. Nice fish to start on. So I've, I've hooked that just in the in the side of the mouth, and my pellet banded pellet's still on. But I would advise when I've caught this fish, I'll go out again. I always change the pellet because it's gone a bit slimy. It's started to break down. You want a hard pellet when you go out next time. So we'll just have a quick look at that. Fully scaled mirror, not a massive fish, but lovely clean fish to start on. First one in the net. So I've had a reasonable start, I've caught four or five fish now um, within half an hour so it's a good start and I expect it to get better really rather than worse but I'm just going to have a break and show you how I hook the band. Um, the bands I'm using today are the latex bait bands and medium which are perfect for the 6mm fin perfect pellet I'm using today and the way I hook it on is probably different to most. A lot of anglers, well there's two trains of thought with fishing bands on a, on a hook for a start. Uh, a lot of people like to hair rig it, particularly with F1 fishing, they take it slightly different to real car, but really I don't really do much uh, F1 fishing so I'm not going to go into that. But they'd like to use it on a hair. Uh, but the trouble is I find with, with having a, a band on a hair rig is that the, the rigs specialised to a hard pellet and that only without cutting the hair and the band off then you could use it for other baits so what I prefer to do is not actually use a hook length and go straight through with my rig and not have a band on a hair just simply hook it on the hook that way the rig becomes more versatile I can take the band off I'm holding it in my hand here so I've just got a bare hook in my fingers and I can put meat on, maggots, corn, it just makes the rig a lot more versatile than being stuck with a, a hair rig band on if you like. Um, so that's the way I prefer to do it. 
So the way I hook the band might be slightly different to the way a lot of anglers do. When you pick a bait band up, it's natural instinct really, if you're not herring in it, is to just go through the middle of the band and come out the side like that. But what I find, you see how that's, that's a skew whiff with the hook? And you can slide it up the bend, but when you've got the pellet on it, it looks not in line with the hook shank. So what I like to do is not do it like that. I like to hold it in my fingers like so, and go in this way so the band ends up in line with the hook shank. But don't go right through the band. All you need to do is nick the rubber, come out the other side. And it's really important, I feel, you don't want the band taking up the, the actual gape of the hook, that'll, that'll cause it the hook not to hook the fish properly if you've got the thickness of the band coming into the inside bend of the hook. So you can see that, I've just nicked that, but that's not about to come off under normal use. And you can slide it up the shank if you want to, but you'll see that's in line with the hook. And I think this is very important. And I feel that when you've got a pellet in there which I'm going to do now. Uh, the way I do this you can use a bander but I prefer to do it just uh, with my two with both hands with my fingertips is just hold the band with your, your thumbnail and then just stretch it over the, the pellet like so it's really very easy when when you've um, done it plenty of times like I have and and that's what I'm saying to, here is uh, if you get it nice and nice and close and slide the, the band up the shank you can see there that it's all in line and the fish can't really take that pellet without hooking itself so that's the way I, uh, I hook the pellet it takes a bit of practice but it's worth taking your time to hook the band like that even if you have to put my glasses on like I'm wearing now because you're not going to have to do that very many times in the day. You can fish probably, I'd say, hazard a guess. Depends, of course, how many fish you're catching. But for 50 fish, well, you know, probably that's too many. Let's say 20 carp, you're probably going to have to do that three times in the day. Just be careful when you unhook the fish that the pellet doesn't come off with the band as you're doing so. And you'll, have, you'll find you have to do that, you know, not more than three times in the day. So now that's on, I'm going to get it back out there and catch another fish. Hi guys, sorry to interrupt this video. It's just a reminder to make sure you like the video, subscribe to Preston Innovations YouTube channel and make sure you hit the notification bell to make sure you never miss another upload. So a nice slightly bigger pellet on there than what I've been feeding. Uh, now I've got to fill the pot up, just putting that pot over my bait box to save spilling the bait roughly about 20 it's getting more and more actually as more and more fish come into the peg what i've not mentioned yet uh, is my shotting pattern so i'm going to go through that my rig in detail just put that there so my pellets don't spill out so i'm using a, a gpm size 18 hook which is which i've hooked a a latex bait band in a medium size onto. Uh, that's tied to a straight through rig. I don't really use hook lengths. I think I've mentioned it before. The main reason for that is I don't like knots in my rig. If you use a hook length, then you've got two extra knots in your rig, which is fine for like small fish, roach and skimmers in that, but can't fight really hard and you, you need a, a really strong rig. So I go straight through 017, I don't find any need to go heavier than that. When I'm pace fishing this time of year, then I go up to 019 power line. Uh, I won't really go higher than that because you've got to think about the tackle that you're holding, you know, your pole. You don't want to be breaking your pole. Um, so I'm using 017 here and that matches perfectly to the to the 15 Jura holler, Jura slip, sorry, the Jura slip one. Uh, so up from that, I've got a number 10, number 10 stots as my telltale shot, and then I've got a bulk of number 8 stots. Uh, that's normally, and it almost always, a third the way up to my float. 
regardless of the depth, that's always the same. It's just a shot down cart rig, really. You know, well, even if it's six foot deep, the shotting rig would be the same. The ball could be a third the way up from the hook, two thirds down from the float. It'd probably be a bigger float. I'm using a 412 cart pellet here, whereas six foot water, you'd need possibly 414s, even 416s, depending on the wind. So up from the bulk, I've got my favourite float of all time, and I use this for, even for my pace fishing now. It fishes brilliantly with any, any bait you'd put on fishing a commercial. The, the reasons, it's got many reasons I like it for. It's a really strong float and it wire stem, it's got a wire stem and that makes it really stable. You know, you've not got carbon or glass. Glass is really stable, but it's not the diameter of wire. The thinner the wire, you know, there's less drift that it'll pick up. So I like it for that reason, as well as it's made out of a, a metal called night eye wire. So you can bend your float in a U shape and it'll just spring back. You can't kink the wire like normal stainless wire. So it's really, it makes a really strong float that will last for ages. Uh, it's got a nice body. I've got three rubbers on there, 0.4 silicon you need for these carp pellet floats. In all the sizes, you need 3.4 silicon rubber to, to, to grip the line properly. Um, and then you've got the eye on top of the body that you go through, obviously, uh, but that cannot pull out. The, the eye is designed so it goes right around the, the tip of the float, which is threaded into the night eye wire stem. So it makes it near enough indestructible. You can ping out of a carp with all your elastic out and the float will still stay intact. So, you know, they're not really, they're not a cheap float, but you don't, for that reason, you don't want to be breaking them or using them up. So above the, above the float, again, this is standard procedure for me. Most of the time, especially if there's wind on it or you get some drift, every time really when you go fishing every peg's different so for that reason i use a back shot and that's normally a number 10 and that's the same as the bulk in a way it's positioned the third the way up from the float and two thirds down from the connector and that doesn't really change that regardless of the length of line you've got between your float and the pole <coughs> that's always about a third the way up from your float and that's a number 10 and the purpose for that is just to keep the, the line under the surface to, to counteract any tow or drift or rubbish on the top and keeps your rig super stable. So now I've gone through all that, I've got to get out there quick because my fish will be losing interest. just got the pole, the end of the pole on, on my elbow because that's where I've plumbed the depth to and I'm lining up with that bramble that's just going in the water there, dropping it plumb down and then tipping the bait on the float. Just a few taps makes it all come out or you'll leave a few pellets in there. So just tap the, the pole and everything's out there and waiting for a bite. Look like a bite but now there's a swirl near my float there so even a swell nearby will send the float under, but not really like a bite would go under. The line has just moved that out of position slightly, so I'm going to pick the float up and move it back into position where I tip them pellets on the float and I've got a bite straight away. Just when I expect to get a bite, that is. This looks quite a bigger fish. So I've got the pole as close to the, the surface as I can, really, with the being high up here. Uh, but once I get back to my top kit, I can get the tip of the pole very close to, or just under the surface of the water. 
and then as I can say if I uh, if I do ping out of the fish then I'm not going to get a horrendous tangle or a spray in the float. I see it feel a lot safer when I've got the top kit in my hand and now it's just pull as much elastic out as you need get everything nice and tight yeah it's a bit bigger fish this time Normally, I don't know why it is, but the bigger fish never scrap as hard as the smaller three pounders. Lovely fish. And try to avoid losing your band by just carefully unhooking the fish in the way that your band stays on. So same procedure again, sometimes you get a bit of elastic hanging out of your pole, you don't want that flapping about, so just pull your puller kit from the other end and that'll just tighten everything up. Take that old pellet off, again look for a slightly larger pellet in the in the bait box and what I like to do is just grip the rig between your knees and then fill your pot with 25 pellets I'm putting in there and that may increase as the day goes on but just before we ship out really important prime this five metre line for, for later Keep looking at your pole tip, make sure that pot's up right. You don't want to be tipping your bait out on the way out. Into position. Pellets on the float. A few taps, ready. So I've gone straight out there and getting line is straight the way. But I'm just looking for that sharp bite, I keep saying, rather than a liner. If you, as long as you're catching a fish every sort of 10 minutes or so, then you're going to end up with a good weight. And there's a fish, even took the elastic out that did. But that's, I think you've got a window of probably two or three minutes really where you're going to get a bite, after that time the fish have ate most of the pellets you've potted in so you're going to have to come back and uh, refeed. As I say the water's warm now, the fish can eat a lot, lot of bait and there's quite a few fish there so it's no good sitting there waiting for a bite, you've got to keep the feed going in, just like feeder fishing in a way, you know you've got to, with, without a bite after two minutes you need to reel back in and chuck your feeder out again. It's just keeping the bait going in your peg and keep the competition going. I'd like to get my pole nearer the water's surface actually so that if, I do get, if one pings off then the float doesn't fly and chance of breaking the float but the edge is stopping me behind me so that's why I'm being extra careful when I've got a fish on. It's good once I get my top kit off then I can put my pole tip next to the water, start pulling the elastic back with my puller kit and I've got no danger of uh, breaking my float if the fish pings off. They're all about the same size these fish are for a start, nothing really big yet but the average size is what I'm catching to be fair in this lake. I think they'd grow a bit more if there were more anglers fishing or it had more matches on it but because they're not getting lots of food then that's what the, why the, the, the size they are. It's common that this time. 
and uh, try and to, to save you but not putting another band on when you unhook your fish just be careful that the pellet in the side of the mouth there again you don't take the band off when the pellet falls out nice three pound coming and again priming my five meter line and then I can bait up and go out again. So time's moving on. The fishing's been brilliant up this edge. Um, in fact, I've even exceeded my expectations on how many fish I'd catch. And I reckon I've had the fish just about every drop in. It's been that good. And that's just how effective fishing like the way I have done uh, with the pot on the end of the pole, just tipping the right amount of pellets on your float, you're more or less guaranteed to catch a fish every drop. And as long as you're smooth and take your time and have a methodical approach, you know, you can get real big weights just by using no more than half a bag of pellets. So whilst I've been fishing that, I've been priming me, me chucking line, as I call it, five metre line. And I'm feeding, feeding it here now just before I've tried it. I've not tried it yet, but now's the time. Um, you know, we're just coming into the afternoon when the fish have gained confidence and they come closer to the angler and I can see signs of fish every time I'm feeding. And I'm feeding a lot heavier than I, than I thought I'd have to feed because the lake is fishing so well. Um, it's not the best peg on the lake, by no means, but I've got a nice warm wind blowing into this end which has obviously brought a lot of fish in front of me. So first drop on this. I'm fishing around about five metres. It's top kit plus one with a bit of line on the end. So I'm going to be around about that distance. And what I'm going to do, I've got not, not got a, pole, uh, a pot on the end of my pole this time. Because I've been feeding it fairly heavy by hand, I'm just relying on fairly accurate hand feeding to get the fish there. And it's obvious that there's quite a lot of fish there. So let's see if we can get one first drop. And there's a fish straight away, lovely bite that went straight under. And, and by the signs of this commotion here, where I'm feeding these pellets, the fish looked to be a bit bigger than what I was catching up the bank. So, um, and already this feels a bigger fish. And that's the norm really. If you have to wait for fish to come to an area you're feeding, then most of the time they're bigger fish. The fish that you catch straight away up to a bank or up to an island normally end up being smaller. So it's it's you know it's it's really worthwhile you you priming another line shorter for later. You know the fish are more more than likely going to be bigger there than what you you start catching on longer lengths up to an island in the shallower water. So I've I've took me me number three section off and I'm just got the, the pole just nearly touching the surface and that what that does it it lessens the angle between the, the pole and the fish and it it makes it really difficult for the fish to swim out you know you've got the fish under control by doing it like this and I'm just pulling out in out the puller as much elastic as I can to keep the rig to keep the fish under the truck control and uh, tire the fish out and it's only when the fish is within netting range that I'm going to pull the top kit up 
and uh, hopefully net it. Still got plenty of fight in it yet. It's a lot bigger fish this than what I've been catching on my longer line. And while I'm playing this fish, it's important to keep this bait going in. It's obvious there's lots of fish there. I've had one on the very first drop in. You can see an odd boil when a, a fish swirl when I'm throwing the pellets in. It's that good. So it's tiring. Um, be interested to see just how big this fish is. It's not massive, but it's bigger than most of them have caught on my longer line. A sign of a good ending if it was a match, this is. Or just as a pleasure fishing, catching plenty of fish and with them being bigger size, makes me happier. Still got some pull in it. Sees the net and it wants to, to swim off. <sighs> yeah, the biggest fish so far, and that's the very first drop I've gone on my five metre line. Uh, very nearly lost my band there, the way I unhooked that fish. So it is, you do need to be a bit careful in the way you unhook your fish so you don't lose your band. Just saves a few minutes putting a new band on. So uh, just show you that fish. It's a lot bigger than what I was catching on the longer line. These are the, you know, these fish that come nearer the margin are always bigger as a rule. So I'm selecting a slightly bigger pellet that stands out in the bait tub. Put my three joint on and I'm just laying it so that the rig comes down and rests just at the bottom of that shelf. And another fish. Again, whilst you've got the fish on, keep that bait going in. As long as you don't let go of your top kit, make sure you've got a good grip on your top kit whilst you're doing this. I've seen so many top kits go in with anglers doing this, especially if your hand's wet, it gets really slippy. And then as soon as I get this fish in the net, there'll be fish there competing to take for the next one. right in the middle of the top lip, just where we like it.
so that it, it's got <laughs> the fishing's that good here now as expected really you know keep firing them pellets in when you're fishing that long line, line for later and uh, they just come in every every put in Yep, plenty of chances here, aren't there? So, the fishing couldn't be any better now at this time of day. They're really lining up there. I'm getting one. If it's not a liner, it's a bite, every drop in. And they're all bigger fish now. You know, because we're closer to the margin, the fish have got bigger. And this is, especially at the Glebe, these last two hours, it's no good being on the feeder or a longer pole. You need to have a short pole in your hands, either fishing paste, hard pellet, well, corn, as long as you're feeding plenty of bait, the fish will be there for you. So, with that said, I think this is the ideal time to wrap the video up, guys. Um, hope you've learned a few things about hard pellet fishing and the feeding, more importantly, uh, to keep you in good stead on your next match. So after, after I've wrestled with this fish, I'll catch you on the next one.